At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. The Honorable Barry Brucker was elected to the Beverly Hills City Council in 2005 and re-elected in 2009. He served as mayor in 2008 and 2011. Mayor Brucker won a seat on the Beverly Hills Unified School District Board of Education in 1997, the first successful write-in candidate in the state of California in 15 years. He was re-elected re in 2001 and served two terms as school board president in 1999 and 2003. The Honorable Barry Brucker. Thank you very much, Marty. Uh, my first foray in city government actually was back in the 70s with three of our sitting uh, council uh, mayors up here. Um, my friend and I decided to go into business um, stenciling addresses on curbs. And we started doing this only to get stopped and cited continually by the Beverly Hills Police Department because it wasn't legal. So we took a year off and started lobbying our city council members and we got endorsements from the police chief and the fire chief. And after about a year, um, Mayors Don Elman, uh, Richard Stone, and Chuck Ehrenberg all supported a change in the law that allowed us to stencil the curbs, and that's what you see today. I'm, I'm not doing that, of course, <laughs> but mine is yeah, mine's fading, but they should have used our technology. Um, and so, and interestingly, Mayor Stone, back in the 70s, wrote me a letter uh, detailing why we couldn't do it and the law and how he would support it. And in my office at City Hall when I served all eight years, I had a framed um, picture of, um, of that exact letter. So that was really a proud moment for me. Um, one other uh, thing that I do, do want to mention, and that was uh, one of my mentors was Frank Fenton. And, uh, I had the good fortune of being assigned to a lot of the finance committees early on with Frank. And as for those of you who know Frank, he's not a man of many words, but every word is a pearl. And he wouldn't say anything. He would sort of be in the background in these committee meetings, and then he'd start to talk, and it was always an aha moment. So he was truly one of, one of the finest people I had ever had the opportunity to work with. Um, as my colleagues before me said, really you can't get much done unless you have the cooperation of your other colleagues. And so I was really grateful that um, one of the items that I truly wanted to champion was the outdoor smoking uh, ordinance, the non-smoking ordinance for outdoor dining. So I guess uh, standing on the shoulders of Charlotte Spadero for indoor dining, uh, we brought forward an ordinance um, to ban smoking for outdoor dining. And, and yeah, thank you. Uh, but so I had gone to Mayor Delshad at the time, and he said, do what you need to do. And he assigned Mayor Briskman and myself to this task. And it took us about a year, and we hashed it out and vetted the, the issues, and we had um, hoteliers who were for it and hoteliers who were adamantly opposed to it. We created a wonderful marketing plan, and it was really through the, the efforts of my colleagues that we as a community became a model for other cities for having one of the most profound outdoor dining, uh, non-smoking dining ordinances. And interestingly, uh, people had said they're gonna all, all of the diners are gonna move to West Hollywood or dine in West Hollywood in Los Angeles. And a couple years later, uh, Los Angeles contacted us and said, how did you do it? And so I was very proud of that. We also started the green team and that was to, um, to expand on what Mayor Delshad had started with his Smart City program. And the green team really was 
a mechanism for expanding all of our green building standards and lead standards. And actually, George Chavez, who's here in the audience and truly a, a gem for this city, um, was really the champion in creating the most comprehensive green building standard in the state at the time. So um, thank you. Thank you, George, for that vision. And thank you to my colleagues um, for joining me in, in supporting that. Um, Mayor Briskman mentioned about civility and the need for it and for us to be aware of it. So when I was becoming mayor for the second term, I came up with a program called Take a Moment. And that, I'm even wearing the lapel pin that has Take a Moment. And it was really a, a, an opportunity for people in the community to pause and take a moment uh, before they say something that may be irresponsible or to take a moment to appreciate someone, appreciate your city employees, appreciate your teacher, your parents, appreciate the fact that we live in a wonderful city and in a free country, um, but also to look at what we were doing um, through the internet. And oftentimes with these e-blasts that were getting very toxic, I'll never forget my wife's uh, take a moment was take a moment before you push send on the computer. So I um, hopefully still remember that. And at that time we charged our um, Human Relations Commission with coming up with a code of civility that um, was really a wonderful message to the community about respect and diversity and how we communicate with one another. And that uh, code of ethics, that code of diversity still hangs uh, as you enter uh, our city council chambers. Um, I had the, uh, the wonderful opportunity to actually work with nine city council members. And, you know, one would say, you know, we're, we all have very strong personalities, very different personalities, but I can tell you with 100% certainty, every council member that I had the honor of working with and all those that came before me um, were 100% committed to finding greatness for this city. Um, we all worked very, very hard to get to yes, and it was truly an honor um, working with my colleagues. And then, uh, Mayor Mirish, um, who's not here, I have to give him credit, but during my watch, we started the Cultural Heritage Commission uh, when I was mayor. But a year earlier, um, Mayor Mirish had been trying to get this off the ground, and with a little bit of fine tuning, uh, we finally did, and now we have a Cultural Heritage Commission that really is looking at, at preserving some of the qualities that we all strive for. Um, and let's just see. So that's about it. Thank you so much. The Honorable Nancy Krasny was elected to the Beverly Hills City Council in 2007 and again in 2013 serving as mayor in 2010, and currently the vice mayor-elect. Mayor Krasny served our city as both a commissioner on the agricultural, architectural, and planning commission. <laughs> mayor Krasny has ra was raised in Los Angeles, graduating from the university high school in UCLA. She went on to teach elementary school for 18 years in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Mayor Krasny and our collector has been instrumental in raising funds for the purchase of public art for the city. Mayor Krasny also can take pride in helping to maintain the city's two-hour free parking. Any, anytime. Uh, I have to tell you, it's very difficult for me to look backwards at what I've done. If I've accomplished it, it's time to move forward and, and look look to the future. I must say, though, that uh, as I 
few things that I remember from my mayorship was I was the first to move the installation to the academy because I'm so cheap the thought of spending all that money for a tent disturbed me to no end and I just remember late nights of feral cat feeding <laughs> declawing uh, but we did get the general pa plan passed. Now, my, my first job after, ele after the election was I went to the post office and tried to get arrested. I could not even get arrested by Officer Foxen at the Beverly Hills post office. And the post office was wrong, and they're still wrong, and some things never change. Now. What am I looking forward to? Some things we work real hard to change and we're real lucky and they happen. And the Google building went in, the Coldwater Canyon Reservoir went in, but I've always had a thing for infrastructure. So the man fiber optic ring went around the city and now I'm hoping to get one gigabit of fiber optic connectivity to every residence in this house for a fraction of what you're paying Time Warner. What Time Warner charges us is outrageous, just outrageous. Uh, I've always claimed that our shallow water is good and clean and now I have a public works commission that finally got me the proof I needed and we have been accidentally dumping about a million gallons a week of good potable drinking water into the storm sewer system because the state says you can't use shallow groundwater. So now that will all change under our new city manager and George Chavez who I am crazy about. We have flaws and warts and problems, but we're going to work on the processes which these things happen under. Our Human Relations Commission will be looking at dealing with rent and landlord-tenant relations. Uh, I have a new little project that I'm working on now and I got off the phone today with the bottler that Mayor Brucker gave me and hopefully we're going to barbecue with Beverly Hills Fire Department's own barbecue sauce and hopefully with that we will be able to fund our, the pension liability for the fire department and in turn have a, a component of that sale go to the firemen's uh, charitable trust where they can give money to other fire departments for firemen in need. So as I look back over what all the mayors have accomplished, I know I'm sitting amongst giants. And I am really proud to be sitting at this table and know that I stand on their shoulders as we move forward. I want to thank you all for being here, and thank you very much. I would like to thank all the mayors for sharing their time and memorable experiences with us. Beverly Hills, how lucky are we to live here?